Hi, welcome to another video. I've never done the steam trains at Tenterden. <laughs> well, I've been on the platform before, but I've never actually been in one. And today is no exception because I'm not going in the train either. But what I thought would be interesting to do is have a mill around Tenterden. It's the Kent and East Sussex Railway Heritage Line. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to have a kind of mill around the station and then also visit the Wittisham, is it Rolvenden, Wittisham, Northium, and then Bodium station. So we get all five stations in this video. I've had to buy a ticket, eight quid to get online because I've got a special event. But I don't mind because we get the footage and we get to be around the station. There's a little museum dedicated to Holman F. Stevens, who had links to the railway. You know, he, he was... Um, kind of a pioneer in the small railway setups for the UK. But we'll get more of that when we go into the um, museum. So yeah, a walk around on Tenterden Station. Plus we get to see some of these wonderful old steam trains in action. got some Pullman coaches and these are old aren't they I know that they still have a Pullman train that drives I've seen it traveling through Folkestone and over the viaduct but they're not that old <laughs> an old water tower I wonder if they still use that they probably do don't they passengers must not pass this point so it's all about trains this video and I'm not really up on trains. I had train set as a kid <laughs> with all these old steam trains and things when it looks like it's heading back to Bodium or it's going to the front of the train. What do you think? Because it's going to go back. It might be a case of just walking down there. Yes, it's changed lines. It's, it's connecting to the carriage, which means that it's going to pull this train back towards Bodium. I'm not sure what the event is, um, but there's a lot of people, steampunk seems to be the um, order of the day. I've seen a lot of steampunk type clothing. We'll have a little meander around there in a minute. I just want to see this train pulling away. I think it's going to pull away. We'll go over to the museum in a minute and have a wander around there. So yeah, Tenterden. I wonder if I can get a price ticket or a timetable for this thing. Travel back in time. Because they've got events at the Kent and East Sussex Railway all throughout the year. And then there's also the map for the route, so Tenterden, Rolvenden, Wittisham, Northium and Bodium, which is where the castle is because I've been there and I caught a picture of a steam train going along. This video up here. 
I feel I feel he's going to pull away in a minute, but I don't know what the times are. Is he about to pull away the train? He's going at quarter past two. I don't know what the time. Is. Oh, it's quarter two, so oh, well, another half hour yet. Yeah. Yeah. How frequently did they run? Um, well, we've, got, we've had five today. That so was twenty past ten, twenty five past eleven, ten past one, quarter past two. Oh, okay. Four. So. So if you bought a ticket, say at the fifteen forty. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get off at Bodium. You'd have to stay on the train and come back, you wouldn't would. you? But if you took an earlier one, you could go and walk around Bodium yeah. and stuff, yeah, and then get the later one back. Makes a nice day out. Yeah, I'm sure it would be, yeah. Oh, someone coming through. Hello. Hello there. Thank you. Okay. So there's another half hour before the train pulls away. So let's just have a quick look around the event. Maybe it's just a case of walking around to see what the stalls are. Then we'll go and have a look at the museum and then watch the train go and then I'll jump in the car and we'll head to the next station so on, so on, so on, so on. I played a gig here with the blues band and we had a marquee just up here we were playing out it was the um, Real Ale campaign for Real Ale camp camera and we had um, kind of the headline spot and Colin had written a song called um, Dragon's Breath Colin was the lead guitarist in the band. I've not been in touch with him since the COVID, COVID era. But we played that gig here and we played that song to a rapturous kind of reception because it was all about Holman F. Stephen. And when I go through the museum, I'm going to overlay the tune because we recorded it as a band. Um, and you can hear it because it kind of tells the story about one of the last trains that Holman F. Stephen had, um, had built. Right, what's here? So we've got a little cafe. Looks appetising, but I've already had my lunch. <laughs> kind of ate it in the car coming over. Let's see what they're doing in this marquee. Hayley Band. <laughs> Funny thing doing these videos because I don't really know enough about the history of it, but I'm fascinated by walking around and just seeing what what is happening and what it's all about. Um, so I do apologise if I give you misinformation, but I think it's just being here, capturing the moment, and I will of course visit the other four stations to complete the line. Anyway, this is Holman F. Stevens. Colonel Stevens. Having served a brief apprenticeship, Stevens embarked on a career in railway building and management from 1890, often using his father's wide contacts and later his own to win friends and influence people. His career can be split into four distinct phases. Resident civil engineer on the paddock wood and railway, civil engineer to the consortium seeking to build railways for the sale to bigger companies, of which only one, the Shepway Light, succeeded. Civil engineer for independent railways, which he often went on to manage, ran from an office in Tunbridge providing common services. Independence from large companies became the dominant theme of his career. An influential rural light railways consultant, including management of existing railway, light railways.
Sit in. <laughs> they didn't respond. Please, I won't, I won't disturb you. I do love how they've recreated the period and the essence of everything, captured all the history. It's really fascinating. So, if you're ever in Tenterden, it's free to enter the museum. Um, to get on the platform I paid £8, but it's a steampunk event, normally you pay £5. You can also get the train, maybe the 11 or the 12 or the 1 o'clock, all the way to Bodium and get off and mill around, maybe visit the castle and then you can um, get the last train back, the last train. I'll put the timetables on the um, screen for you, showing you all the times that the trains are travelling through the summer. But I want to capture the steam train leaving, so let's head out and see if it's hopefully not already gone. <laughs> I'm almost inspired to build another railway. <laughs> um, now then, to capture this train leaving, I think it might be worth standing the other side of the crossing, because then I can be at the crossing as it's leaving. What do you think? I want to capture it going down the, um, the valley. Okay, it's ten past, ten past two, quarter past it leaves, so ten minutes. It's like they're loading the people on. Station master's coming out. I think I just saw a little child climbing up onto the, um, onto the train. There's a mother there, hoping that he's not going to be 
grabbed so that you do all the coal, you know, shoveling. <laughs> so I'm thinking either stand here, this might be a good place because I can capture it going down the hill, but I can also have it passing, or I stand, and I'm not sure if this is private, it says private access to footpath, no access to the footpath, but that's down there. So is this private? Or is this additional parking for the um, for the station? Because this would be an ideal location to have it coming out. I think I'm going to stand here. Something is happening. It's getting ready. Okay, the guy's coming to close the gate. For all traffic. I've got to capture all of it, it just makes sense. It's a little MG midget there, look. He's having to wait. <laughs> okay, this is it. Steam train coming. I'm excited. <laughs> I almost feel like I want to go home and <laughs> rebuild a model railway. But I won't. I love it. Old steam trains. Despite my lack of superior knowledge of the railways and what this all stands for, it's so much fun just standing here and kind of taking it all in, smelling the atmosphere. Right, let's head down to Rolvenden Station, see if it's anything. I know Bodium Station's good because it's got the same kind of bric-a-brac and detritus as this station, but I've never visited the other three, so let's just have a quick look. Rolvenden Station, so the first stop, the train's coming down from Tenterden and into Rolvenden Station. <laughs> it looks very, um, what, what would you call it, country? living but look it's actually a working station oh, I, I say that this is all the coal for their steam trains isn't it let's say that we can come up here so this doesn't look like it's as well kept and presented as you know Tenterden but then it's just a, a, a small line yeah so there we go rolling them I was just there, I'm now at this crossing. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll do all of them. Let's walk down the platform. Golden film motor oil. I think I saw at the museum that Holman F. Stephen was born 1868, something like that. I hear a train. Have I beaten the train coming all the way down? I'm sure it would have already gone through. However, the semaphore signal is already up. Oh yeah, the, the two things going on down there. So um, we missed the train, but then that's to be expected. Look at that old steam train. I wonder if this is the yard where they maintain all their trains for their heritage railway. Look at that in there. Looks great. Oh, this is a viewing gallery. Let's go and view. <laughs> we can actually see the whole station and its layout. 
Look at all these puffers, aren't they wonderful? Under steam test it says there. Marcia, Hastings, Swift Shaw. And the old boy, oh he's coming, he's got his token in his hand. So maybe the steam train is coming through. I wonder if, because the, the, it took me five minutes to drive down. But is it taking the train longer to go down the line? Now he's got the token. The principle is, because it's a single line, you cannot travel on the line if you don't have the token. Because the other train that's coming the other direction has the token. Well, well, well. It is coming down here. I didn't bring my Sony Cybershot out. I'll have to capture this footage with my iPhone. So when I leave here and head to the next station, which is either Northern or, or Wittisham, will I get there before the train? This could be a fascinating video where I'm following the train all the way down. Right, they're opening the um, gate. It is, it's the same train. Well, well, well. So we'll see the um, driver. I don't think it's going to stop here, but we'll see the um, train driver collect the token off the station master. So the swapping of the tokens, he now has right of way to travel on the line because it is a single line that's going all the way around. And because he has the token, he will expect no other trains coming down the other way. Thing is, the thing is, there's only one train running today. So the principle of the token, I suppose you still have to maintain protocol, right? Okay, they're leaving again. We'll watch them leave and then I'll race to the car and maybe get them at the next station. <laughs> Got to give them a wave, see if they respond. Fascinating. I wasn't expecting that, so that's made my day. <laughs> Seeing the train at the next station. So how far is... What's the next one? We'll look on the map now. So we've just had Rolvenden. It took me five minutes to drive, but it took the train 10 to 15 minutes to get here. So Wittisham from here, five or 10 minutes drive. It's got to traverse that, then it's got to go to Northium and then Bodium. But I'm not going to race it. We'll just get to the next station, have a quick look. And um, it might be a case of quickly look at Wittisham, quickly look at Northium, race to Bodium, and then watch the train coming in. So, next station. And so we arrive at Wittisham Station. And guess what? The train is just arriving. Fabulous. I'm chasing this train, aren't I? So he's taken the token from the guy walking along with it. I didn't know that I'd be chasing the train today. What a noise! But it's exciting. Whoa, he's letting off steam. That is loud. Changing the signal. 
in this particular box. I imagine <laughs> all those levers he's pulling. We have to wait for the semaphore signal to go up, right? That's my understanding. I'm really going to race for the next station. What a fabulous day. I really wasn't expecting this. I'd see the train leave Penterden and that would be it. I may be fortunate enough to race ahead of each of the stations and get there just in time. Let's just take a shot of the train. When you are your own cameraman and sound engineer, it's difficult. I'm holding Sony Cybershot there to capture the footage. So the gate's closed. No go through now. The race is going to be on. I feel a challenge coming on. <laughs> See if we can get to the next two stations. We've got Northium and Bodium left. Should, we should be able to do it. Look at the size of that thing. Amazing. That's why they're using the token, because there was another train on the line. So they're going backwards and forwards, aren't they? Two steam trains in a day. I feel blessed. That's got to be worth a like on the video, especially if you're into steam trains. <laughs> right, we're just going to go. Wonderful. Right, the race is on. Can we get to Northium Station before um, the train gets there? Probably not. I don't know how far it is. I don't know my way to Northium, so I'm going to have to use the sat nav. <laughs> right, let's get on. Northium Station. I missed the connection. <laughs> don't say you missed your train. Um, ten minutes. The guy at the at uh, the last one, Wittersham said, it's 10 minutes, you won't make it, and I didn't, because it took me 25 minutes to get here, traffic basically, um, but he said, if you are quick enough, it takes on water here, and there's the water tower, so if nothing else, we can take a little walk along the platform, can't we, because this one looks more presented than um, Wittersham, which was clearly just a little station. Now, what was it serving? Was it just the East Kent Railway? East Kent and Sussex Railway. I guess it was a connecting railway, wasn't it? People would have used these lines. Drop me a comment if you know. Maybe I'll look at the information board up there. I've got it in my head that it was just for goods and freight. Perhaps it was a proper off the beaten track. Maybe these are the things that Beeching cut way back when, you know, that the, the lines were on the main railway for British Rail, but ended up being 
uneconomical and so they dropped the lines and the heritage railways took them on. Oh, the smells of summer, you can't smell it, but I can smell all the plants in the hedgerow here. Lovely wafts. The sign on the edge says Bodium, so that to me says that the train coming from that direction, the next station is Bodium. You would think so, right, because that's the line. Let's have a quick look at this. If nothing else, I can read it to you and we can get some understanding of why the railway was here. The railway you see today, 10 and a half miles in length, is a fine example of one of England's light railways. So it was a light railway. Originally part of a larger system which operated between Headcorner and Roberts Bridge. Passenger trains ran between 1900 and 54, and the goods service finally succumbed to road traffic, ceasing 61. That's all I needed to know. 13 years before the first trains ran on the short section in 1974. So yeah, you can see here, they've turned it into a very fine, hey, recognize the faces. Lucy Worsley, Paula Grady, met him twice. <laughs> Ironically, I was getting the train back to Ashford and I was running, I was commuting and it was those push me, pull you doors, you know, way back when. And I jumped on and there was this guy sat right, you know, cause you jump in the door and he had his little dog on his lap. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, is this the Ashford train? He said, I hope so, in a Liverpoolian accent, <laughs> as if to mean I'm going that way. And then I sat on the opposite side of the carriageway to him and kind of just observed that he had a little dog and stuff. I thought nothing of it. And then after when, afterwards I got home and I realized that was Paul O'Grady. <laughs> So there we go, Bodium. Might use the facilities actually. Because this is a working station, unlike Tenterden, which kind of harks back to the, the history of everything, they're more tuned in like with the museum and allowing people to visit and take it all on board. Whereas these are just, you know, built for purpose but they're not, you, you wouldn't come here for the day to spend the day looking around. Nonetheless, it's very pleasant. I'm gonna to head to Bodium. I might get there in time because it's only down the way there. The castle's just beyond. Might only take five minutes to get there. So um, how do you get out of here? <laughs> do I have to walk all the way back down the platform? Oh no, I can go through here. Walk back to my car that way. I'll go to the car. We'll head down to Bodium and um, conclude the video I think. I was going to say conclude but I just saw this holiday accommodation so what they've done they've turned all of these little railway carriages into well holiday accommodation right a one berth cabin I don't know what the prices are for these but they look rather nice <laughs> I think these could be businesses it's interesting standing right next to them, how large they are. LNER. If I can find a link to what this is on the web, I'll put it on the screen. But it's rather fascinating that you can come here and stay in one of these. You can see there's kind of a kitchen area there, maybe a living room. Let's go around the other side and see what they look like from the other side. <laughs> Only because I'm nosy. Got some people sitting out there. Maybe that's the only one that's a holiday accommodation. Look at them looking at me with my camera. Right, on to Bodium. I made it just in time to see the train leaving Bodium Station. <laughs> so let's take a quick walk around here, see what this one's all about. I, the last time I was here, they had a carriage <coughs> with what represented 
the fallen soldier you know the cenotaph in london <coughs> the unknown soldier in his coffin was carried from northern france all the way to london and it stopped here and they had a carriage i don't know if they've still got it it'd be worth taking a look but um let's go on the platform and see what's what's what so that was 1535 the one that's just left it's another one leaving at six 16.45 in an hour. I don't think I'll be here in an hour. <laughs> yeah, they've got some old carriages. We'll go back there in a minute and we'll have a look. <laughs> Little babies at a pram, look. The old trolleys and a weighing scale. We take travel for granted now, don't we? In this modern age with our push push me pull you trolley um suitcases and things like that but i can imagine the 1800s into the 1900s train travel was the thing that connected everybody unless you were going by boat across the channel or to america so the quick way to get from anywhere in in england and scotland was to travel by train so of course all of these trolleys were really important because people would have all their trunks wouldn't they and their suitcases and a porter may i take your luggage for you i love it i love the old history of everything the old carriages look so what we'll do we'll walk around the other side get on the other side of the platform there and just see if we've got anything that we can step into and, and have a look at Because it's the um, steampunk weekend, I'm wondering if they've still got lots of things going on here that relate to steampunk. Oh, it is here, look, the Ka Caval van. We will go in here, the unknown soldier. Reverend Railton was the person behind the idea of the tomb of the unknown warrior at Westminster. During the Great War he was a captain. One evening in France he passed a small garden in the corner which was a grave marked by a simple wooden cross. On the cross written in pencil were the words, an unknown British soldier of the Black Watch. The words moved him greatly and he later wrote, how that grave caused me to think, what could I do to ease the pain of father, mother, sister, sweetheart, wife and friend? It's quite moving actually, the fact that this carriage, well not this one, but a carriage similar to this, carried the body or the remains. A British warrior who fell, it's hard to read that, in the Great War of 14, 1914 to 18, for king and country. So yeah, my thoughts are, that the unknown soldier's carriage came through here. Fascinating. Okay, the steampunk people are having some fun. <laughs> Hop picking memorabilia and photos.
That's what they did, wasn't it? They stayed in these little huts on the farms. Travelled down to Kent to do hop picking. Memorabilia for the steampunk people. Is it a private function going on up here? I think I might just take a peek, see what they're doing. And the hops, look at the hops. What a lovely day to spend on a Saturday afternoon in the summer. <laughs> so that's all five stations on the Kent and East Sussex line from Tentenden to Bodium, taking in the history, seeing lots of steam trains and chasing trains, <laughs> seeing if I could get there. <laughs> I missed everything at Northium and I only got here in time to see the train leaving again. But that's it. I think I can't do any more, can I? <laughs> End of video. Thank you so much for watching and bearing with. And I'll see you in another one. Bye for now.